Yes, 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 yes. You have found Sonic Weekly, the once every seven days or so show about Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm Grandpa. With me, he's back this week. He's the director of Sega Saturn Development and the author of the Rings of Saturn blog. Substack, you might say. It's Bo. Bo's back. Hi, Bo. Hey, we call it a blog or a website. I don't know what they're saying these days, but this is a podcast. Yeah, nobody needs to know. Uh, but you know who does know is uh, Smoothies. Hi, Smoothies. Hi, what do I know? Wasn't paying attention. Exactly. Are we recording? Yes. And uh, now the star of the show, out of the shadows, onto the stage in the spotlight, it's David the Lurker. Hi, David. Whoa. Oh, hi, Grant. Uh, Bo, Smooth, hello. Hello, all the trio, trio of you. That, that's hi. what, you are a trio, technically. To you? Yeah. But to me, the three of you are a trio. Right. I guess together we're a quartet. We are a quartet. But... And, uh... We have a special guest with us on this episode. He's a friend of the show. And I think this this episode actually marks his third appearance, I believe, on the show, which makes him our most frequent guest. And as Smoothies pointed out to us earlier, this marks one year of doing Sonic Weekly. This is either the 52nd or 53rd episode, depending on your count, if you count the bonus episode, which was a very funny episode, but also one of our lowest downloaded. Uh, <laughs> the fewest amount of people have heard that episode. But it's a very special episode, and we are very happy to have Sam Logan. Hi, Sam. Hi, thanks for inviting me on the show to scold people for not watching your bonus episode. That's what <laughs> I'm here, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, it's for the OGs. Uh, uh, so then when they, yeah. when they track us down, they can be like, yeah, I heard when you talked about whatever we talked about on that episode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the people on YouTube remember. will have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> That's right. Our back catalog is not on YouTube. If you'd like it on YouTube, tell us or something. <laughs> Do you guys remember like trying to get back issues of the Archie comic and you had to like cut out the page of the comic and then get your dad to write a check? Yeah. Ooh, I, oh. I didn't like the idea that you're supposed to cut it out. I know, I didn't either. It's I upsetting. also wanted issue two. Well, that's why you use a photocopier. You go to your local Kinko's, um, ah. lay it down, and that's how you do it. I did it, but then didn't get it sent in because my parents refused to pay for it. But yet they paid for the photocopy. I just remember liking those pages because they always had cool Patrick Spazianti art on it. That's true. Uh, those like subscription, like the back order things they would have like, like he had one where they looked like the Sonic the Fighters like style 3D models. Oh, and, like, yeah. They were always pushing uh, Sonic kids too, I remember. Because like, they would always like <laughs> choose a few to highlight. <laughs> and like that special was always one of like, and Sonic kids, like that's not a huge incentive. <laughs> Well, it's like it's one of the only ones they did a follow up to, so maybe it was like really popular. I think you're right. I don't know why, but yeah, just based on what you're saying, because there was a sequel. Maybe they just had too many copies. Hey, speaking of sequels, <laughs> let's uh, let's do the news. Let's talk about the big Sonic things that are happening this week. David, what's happening? Whoa, okay, I'm tuning in live, SonicStadium.org. But guess what? It's not just Stadium. It's Twitter. It's Facebook. It's Instagram. It's everywhere. You didn't have to wait for the Super Bowl, which is this Sunday, which probably already happened by the time you're listening to this. Whoa, Knuckles, the TV show that was announced and promptly forgotten, is finally out in full swing, at least the trailer, not the show itself. The show itself comes out April 26, but it exists. They filmed it. Knuckles is in it. The hat is in it. Wade is in it. Wade is in it. So much Wade. Can't <laughs> handle all that Wade. <laughs> it's it's the Wade show. Don't call it the Knuckles it's show. The Wade show. Right. I, I, there, there, is a, there is a little bit of Sonic and Tails in there. We, we see the dog. We see... Uh, the mailman. The mail... Right. Important character who uh, has been in both movies. None of them. It's fine. But yeah, we saw it. Definitely, you know, the showcase, it's focusing on Knuckles. What did they call it? They didn't call it a show. They called it a six episode event, which I think is an important distinction. They're not calling it, oh, it's their streaming show. It's a spinoff show. It's an event. And if you're not there, <laughs> that means you're lame. <laughs> are they all going to drop at once or are they going to do one a week? Great question. Uh, I don't think they didn't you know. say. What does Paramount Plus normally do? Does anyone have Paramount Plus? <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm sure somebody here knows what Paramount Plus normally does, um, right? Because we all subscribe yeah. to it. Yeah, no, nobody in our group, <laughs> any listener have Paramount Plus? If, if so, right. tell us. I, I, I guess. Podcast uh, uh, anybody here like Star Trek? If you like Star Trek, maybe you have Paramount Plus. I mean, I like Star Trek, but... Not at that price. In this I, I, right. Topic, so. When Picard was <laughs> airing, that was once a week. Hmm. So That was once a week. I so I, I'm good with once a week. I think the fact that they're calling it an event implies once a week. 
But I don't know, wouldn't that be six events? Yeah, that's a bunch that's of events. That's true. That's a good point. It's a really good point. It's not events. It, it's one full it event. It could be one event like a yeah, like a comic long event. Like a comic book event month and a is a hundred issues, but yeah. it's one event. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it seems yeah. like more of an epoch to me, but okay. <laughs> Sonic Epoch? <laughs> that bowling alley, according to our friend Pepperidge, is the one here in Vancouver and Burnaby, Rev's bowling alley. Uh, I can't say that I personally recognized it, but I have been in that bowling alley a lot. So if that is a correct observation, oh. uh, that's pretty cool because they're going to tear that bowling alley down soon. Oh. <laughs> so it's going to be memorialized in the Knuckles television show. Right. Yeah, I mean, he said that that was the case. I didn't fact check this information, I, but, you know. I trust him. Yeah. Right. If it's being teared down, I think we should start a campaign to save it. Yeah. This <laughs> yeah. Is a historical landmark. It is becoming a national monument. Maybe yeah. that's the plot of the Knuckles show. It's like they're going <laughs> to, you know, put out a fundraiser to save the bowling alley. That would be adorable. What was our idea that he <laughs> he has to host the the late show that was vacated by what's his face? Oh, Jay, uh, it James Corden. Corden? Yes, James yes. Corden. Yeah. Knuckles. Has to... <laughs> I mean, I'd concept. watch. We should have, yeah. I'd... That that would be a good six episode event, right? But that's not what was in the trailer. No, <laughs> yeah. What did everyone think of the trailer? Well, uh, it was fine. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, I think everyone is happy that visually it looks like it's keeping pace with the movies. Like it doesn't look like cheap or obviously like significantly like worse in any way. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I guess just because like the quantity of recognizable video game things in it is very like low overall. It seems like, you know, it's a story about like a version of Knuckles who's kind of different from the ones in the game, having an adventure on earth that mostly involves humans. And so like, I don't have like a a touchstone for that where I can be like, Oh, like it's the airplane or it's the boss from Sonic two or whatever. So like, I don't know, maybe it'll be good. (laughs) But it's kind of hard to say. I did like like uh, old Pac-Mac there working in the bowling alley for some reason. I look forward to that being explained. <laughs> that was very strange. Uh, I I clocked his face as I watched the trailer, but it took until seeing the screenshot that he was working at a bowling alley, which is surprising. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe that's part of like a vision or a dream or maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's happening. Maybe. A, a vision would be consistent with the narrative about Pacamog and Sonic Adventure. Like, I hope Knuckles he's just, just goes on a snooze yeah. cruise and <laughs> <laughs> right there in the bowling alley. I hope it's just literally him and he just retired. It's yeah. like his people all got killed and he was pretty bummed out. So he goes to Earth and he's kind of chilling out. And now he can teach Knuckles a valuable lesson um, about how there's more to life than fighting or something. <laughs> watching it, I'm not like super jazzed about it personally, but I am looking forward to experiencing it with my six-year-old son because i feel like he will really appreciate whoa that's knuckles on tv six six episodes of it like let's go yeah i think it, if you're between the ages of six and 12 you're probably in the the target demo for this so i'm excited yeah, six for... and seven and a half i think is really right really Huge. dialed in right there i'm excited for my friends like Bo who have children as an adult without children I'm still excited nonetheless. He's got the hat. And, uh, you know, it's uh, Knuckles. What are you going to do with Knuckles? I, th- I, I, th- I think he is pretty consistent with how he is in the games. I mean, in Frontiers, he's also, you know, a warrior, duty bound. He's, you know, this he's in different circumstances because he's made that vow with Sonic and Tails about the Master Emerald, which I love. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of weight and, and uh, we'll, we'll sort of see how it is. Kid Cuddy plays one of the villains and the villains kind of like have like a cool thing and and uh rory mccann i think is his name he played the hound in game of thrones he plays the villain who worked with robotnik what does that mean but i'm kind of just like on board in general i think with the sort of 2020s vision of sonic this movie version of sonic that you know this is just sort of the way that it is it reminds me of sonic x Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know we just had sonic prime too which is like that's the glimpse into the the sonic world and there was nothing there it was empty. <laughs> so I don't know where you put them. There were four of them and nothing was in any of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the show's going to be better than Prime. I like the kid cutting angle. I think the rest of the people who did the music for the first movie should be in it, like Wiz Khalifa and Ty Dollar Sign. <laughs> like, let's bring them in. Uh, a lot of people were excited that they had Knuck If You Buck as the uh, yep. throwback 2004 mm-hmm. song. What else do we know about it? 
Christopher Lloyd is supposed to be in it. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd. I guess he's supposed to be a Pachacamac or Mac, as uh, he's being called. Yeah. Of course, right. We assume it's a vision, but if if it's like, oh yeah, people call him Mac, who's calling him Mac if he's not really there? Uh, unless Knuckles is just having like a complete disconnect with reality <laughs> and is imagining the bowling alley, the people who work there. Wade. We find out Wade was never really there. It was actually Knuckles. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I think Sam might be onto something with the they have to save the bowling alley thing. It's like maybe <laughs> Wade's family is connected to the bowling alley. That reminds Knuckles of like, oh, I don't really have a family. He has a dream of like, what if I did have a family and they lost and they ran the bowling alley? Yeah. That would be that would look a little something like this. And then you see that image. And then they then he feels invested in like, you know, because duty, right? Duty is a big part of Knuckles. And so it's like, what is he dutyful to? Who is he dutyful to- <laughs> for <laughs> in this in this I guess it's toward this town and his home and his and the emerald. So Wade is like an extension of that. He's got to trade up, train up Wade. So yeah, I'll tell you what I really, really did not like about the Knuckles trailer, Mm -hmm. which is that on Twitter, Ken Penders was trending because (laughs) every idiot was making the same joke of like, Mm -hmm. Ken Penders must be fuming RN. They're not saying right now. They don't have time to say right now. RN. And then it's like a picture of SpongeBob or something. And it's everybody saying the exact same thing, exact same thing. Right. And uh, leave the man alone. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what he's probably doing? Uh, not thinking about this show. He's getting ready to launch the first uh, graphic novel, the first <laughs> compilation. Are you? Did you already pre-order it? Grant, is your name in the book? Ken's book? No, I'm afraid not. Why not? Oh, we should pre-order under the name Sonic Weekly. Get it? I mean, get our name out there. If we do it in the next couple of days, if somebody does it, we could get it in there. Okay. Yeah, like, um, let's do it. All right. Well, I, yeah, I'm into it. We can be under who, whoever else is there. Because he said the first 200 people, he hasn't reached 200 people yet. Ooh. And on the fifth, he said, last call. So I don't think he cares. He's probably like, oh, yeah, Knuckles. I wrote Knuckles. but he's. he's I think he absolutely cares. He's name searching on Twitter every day. <laughs> he's seeing that he's trending. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think he's getting ready to sue Paramount because Knuckles has a TV show and he's wearing the hat from the OVA. Well, and his lawyer won't answer the phone anymore. <laughs> I mean, he might do the thing where he's like, you know, because I've seen him do things like this before. Where he'll make some tweet like lots of people are pointing this out to me. I guess I better take a closer look at it, you know, but like, I don't know that he's going to come right. out swinging. Like- yeah, he, he did that for the second movie. And then he was like, oh, OK, and didn't say anything more because people were trying to poke at him like, oh, Knuckles is a dad. Oh, it kind of looks like Dimitri kind of looks like Locke. And then he watched the movie and clearly didn't do anything because he knew it was different. <laughs> you could say Ken can be a little, uh, but I don't think he's that trigger happy to sue people over over that. Yeah, he's just writing his book. I think he's more likely to be sued than than sue at this point. Yeah, uh, mm. ah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> he's reprinting Archie issues. <laughs> he is reprinting Archie issues, <laughs> and we can have our name in it. We can we can be. <laughs> called in to testify it did you know <laughs> you'd be expert witnesses <laughs> oh man i'd love right. to be an expert witness about <laughs> that's what i'm hoping for uh well if you're the state's attorney please email us sonic weekly podcast <laughs> at gmail.com if you think we have a case hey uh you know lara Sue chronicles speaking of sonic type knockoffs a more exciting one came out this week Rolling Rascal. It rolls right off the tongue. Of course it's Rolling Rascal. What else would it be? It's better than Spark the Electric Gesture. Yeah. It doesn't roll off the tongue at all. <laughs> yeah. Demo, it's out. Looks awesome. Looks like the kind of game that is what I've been... It looks like a Mario Odyssey with a Sonic, and it's you go your own way, and you can, but you can race. There's online multiplayer. I haven't played it. Sam, I know you have played it. I'm not sure who else has played it Some, somebody educate me about it who's making it what what's there it's like the guy who made the sonic gt fan game a while ago oh. and then he's teamed up like an artist collective or something that had previously done like fan animations and now is kind of moving into original stuff they did like an earthbound thing and i, I think a smash brothers thing i can't remember what they're called though do we know the company or individual who did the um cg intro for that trailer because wow i think was some good animation yeah, I think that that's the um, the the people that he's teamed up with. They, that's that's the main thing they seem to do is animation. Gotcha. Yeah, it looked good. It did. Yeah, Curiomatic. That's the name of the company. Okay. Um. So so if you like, look them up. You can see like some YouTube 
things that they have done in the past. So this is like them kind of like pushing into it. I've got to check out this intro because Smoothies does not give out that kind of praise lately. Oh, <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough critic. Yeah, that's really just really nice, appealing character animation. I th- I think that it's the same people doing the animation for the game because it's uh, okay. It looks pretty good in the game too. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there he is, little guy. Right. I went to the Kickstarter page because they they launched it, and I guess we're fully funded in twelve hours. That's what the the thumbnail said. Yay! Yeah, damn. And they've still got twenty seven days to go. They were looking to to, to raise fifty. They're at uh, seventy thousand one hundred sixteen at the moment of this recording. Wow. Seventy thousand dollars. They're at seventy, yeah, seventy grand right now. That's that's enough money for one person, maybe two people to live off of a year. What in the Midwest? They ask for. A, they have a very low. Yeah, they had a very low goal. That's. Um, I know they're in Brazil, at least some of them. So I don't know if that okay, is a factor. That helps. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know if they're all in Brazil. I know the main guy seems to be from there. Yeah, that is an extremely low budget. Wow. Yeah, I was quite surprised by that given the look of the game i was like wow that is not a lot of money (laughs) no no it's not that's uh but hey i mean they're already right at at 70 grand it looks like they've got some stretch goals going there if you want a hub world they have to get to 150k Mm -hmm. (laughs) i want that hub world hey i mean the hub world looks neat in this Mm -hmm. little thumbnail so if they give me like really weird dialogue from npcs like sa1 (laughs) or 06 (laughs) yeah (laughs) let's get that 150 yeah yeah all right and then you can play as cutie if they hit uh, 200k who is i guess the other character i don't really know much about it but it does look nice i haven't played it yet certainly some sonic vibes it's a free demo well i guess i should play it i played the demo earlier today just because i thought we might be talking about it it's good like the if the character feels really good, the environments are really fun to run around in. Damn, I definitely kind of had a feeling by the end of it of being curious, like in a larger game, what specifically you're going to be doing. I guess like mm. it's it's linear. It's like a kind of wide linear sort of like Sonicy thing where where you know there's generally a direction you're supposed to be going, but there's like lots of different little side paths and stuff to take it. But I don't know if there's like any like particular motivation to like explore like collectibles or things like that or if it's just like get to the end as fast as you can there's like a scoring mechanic for doing things in a stylish way like linking together your different moves and stuff so maybe that's kind of like the larger goal if you were to like relate it to a game or explain it in terms of games that somebody who stopped playing games in 2001 (laughs) (laughs) it's not really like any 3d sonic games that I have, like <laughs> because it's not it's weird because it looks like one <laughs> it does it's well i guess it's like the control wise maybe but there's like a big emphasis on a, a rolling move that's very spin dashy like you can kind of like charge it so like feels sonicky but like the actual level design i think doesn't feel like say like a sonic generations or something like that just because it's so it's like too broad it's like yes there's like lots of little roads and paths but they're like they kind of like branch off and intersect in a way that i don't know it doesn't it doesn't feel as much like you're on like this one particular track a lot of the time as as that you're okay. being given all these kind of options and i guess for me i kind of the part of me was like oh should well should i be going and looking at each of these things or should i just be like running to the end or i, I don't know that's maybe a me problem but <laughs> in addition to the levels being big and sprawling it also reminded of odyssey in the trailer that i saw of like you take control of the enemies right like with the, the capture mechanic yeah. in odyssey is similar to that maybe it's it's, it's like a, a very light version of that you can jump on top of the mm. enemy and then kind of steer them around oh, i see and so like there was there was like one kind of enemy where you could sit on them and then like walk around with them firing their cannon uh and then there were other ones where when you jumped on them they immediately start like blasting forward like Kind of like, you know, like in Rayman 2, there's those rockets that you ride on. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like as soon as you get on it, it's like they start going and you can steer them a little bit, but like not very much. And so you would maybe capture one of them. To... I'm happy with that. Yeah, it was fun. That sounds fun. You like capture them to like crash them into something that you want to blow up, like a, a wall or something uh, nah. that's only breakable with one of those guys. Uh, and those were kind of the two kinds of enemies I remember. So it's not like Mario, we're not spending like an extended period of time doing like a radically different set of mechanics. It kind of seems more like you can hop on them and then use mm-hmm. their kind of one ability. Okay, gotcha. so what we know so far is it's not like Mario and it's not like Sonic. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm bad at this. It's definitely like Sonic. <laughs> I just like, I don't know what specific Sonic game to equate it to. 
Uh, in the Kickstarter description, it says that Roland Rascal is a love letter to high-speed 3D platformers like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, with the dynamic yeah. interactivity. So definitely the Mario game it's Mother. most like is Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> I I forget where I saw I saw it just somewhere. The the ones that they mentioned specifically were Adventure Two and Sunshine were their main inspirations. Oh. So the two thousand one. So that that is your uh, there you go. Bo understands those words. Yeah, uh, there you go. Right. Did you play Sunshine or was that right after? I actually have played Sunshine. Okay. So yeah. so you still know. Good. No. <laughs> it feels very aesthetically like Sunshine, like the environment okay. you're in. And it has this very like Sonic Adventure 1 kind of uh, like beach rock background music that I enjoyed. Oh, well, <laughs> now you've got my attention. <laughs> it's like that kind of like sort of like smooth 80s guitar instrumental kind of vibe. It's not like super like bleep bloopy video gamey type stuff. It's more kind of like wave ocean or not wave ocean uh, whatever the first level of sonic adventure was emerald coast yeah emerald coast yeah i, that, I would it's... take either but yeah <laughs> wow two topics and uh two times that i'm now giving to the i'm, I'm out of money both times i've got to contribute to ken penders <laughs> right then i got to contribute to rolling rascal kickstarter i said i want to support both sure yeah you should it looks good Let's see. You could probably spend more on Rolling Rascal if you wanted to, but you could try to make it even, like exactly. Have you ever done it to, to a bad Kickstarter? I, I backed Mighty Number no. Nine. <laughs> it did come out though, which I kind of feel like I've never backed a Kickstarter yeah. that didn't come out. So your name's somewhere in that six-hour credit is it? credits thing, right? Oh, I guess so. Unless I had to do something to make it happen. Right? Do you not know like the exact timestamp? Like, oh yeah, my name's there <laughs> at two hours, forty-three minutes, and seventeen seconds. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever checked any of the Kickstarters I backed for that particular feature. I think I checked it in Psychonauts 2 and then realized I didn't back it at a tier that got me a credit after spending like oh, a no. long time back to it. Well, you should mod the game and put your name in the credits. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Make you feel better. Yeah. Roll a rascal. It looks fun. I think it, it looks, you know what? If, if you've got if you've got the scratch is what I'd say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, go ahead and, and throw a throw a couple bucks towards Curio Maddox way and they'll say thank you and if you spend uh, 130 dollars, that's the collector's edition. Whoa, you can be a beta tester at 400, <laughs> and you can be a beta tester and design an outfit at 2500. So, hey, if you've got, oh, you can design a level if you've got four grand. Wow! Oh, my lord. All right, David, list all the perks for us, David. Okay, okay, right we'll now. start from the beginning. One question. Don't, one question. No. <laughs> one question. Um, yes. Yes. Sonic X Shadow mm -hmm. Generations price point. Is it a sixty dollar game? Is it a forty dollar game? Full price. Yeah, it'll be sixty, 60 for full a price. couple of weeks, and then yeah, down to <laughs> yeah. 40, right? Like yeah. obviously, yeah, exactly. like they're they're gonna get yeah. sixty bucks from me, and then yeah, I don't know, probably thirty five dollars from the rest of you, <laughs> right? As the wife of the pod pointed out last episode, Sega's confidence only lasts two weeks, so yeah, yeah. I I cannot fault them. Like, okay, there's some number of people like me out there who are just gonna pre-order anything that they put out like take take my money <laughs> you gotta support the yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think like the fact that they're putting a, this substantial in addition in the game is kind of like right because that's the minimum thing we would have to do to be able to sell this game for 60 dollars. you know like it's it's not you can't really say that they're doing like a big visual upgrade on it or anything so it needs some kind of substantial content addition yeah, and we think it's going to be three levels. That seems a little weak, but is it going to be an act one, act two? Because then that's I mean, kind of more like sick. it shows them transitioning from the arc to a city. Like it feels like it's going to be one big experience. It doesn't feel like it's going to be separate levels. I kind of was assuming, like I don't know, I you know, you try to play like trailer detective on this, so you may disagree with me. But I looked at it and I kind of thought that those shadow stages reminded me a little of the vibe of the cyberspace stages in frontiers and like they just gave us 10 of those for free so like i think like, <laughs> that's true they did yeah <laughs> so i kind of feel like maybe there won't be a huge number of level themes but maybe they will reuse the same themes for multiple stages to make it longer you know mm -hmm. like in, instead of the way the generations has all those little side challenges like they'll just have like a bunch of little bits on in each area and that will like pad it up even if it's only going to be like three textures that they put on those floating rectangles well i guess i'm kind of interested to see if there's like classic gameplay for shadow because they did a little bit of that in episode shadow for oh yeah forces and i thought 
those were actually kind of cool. Like they used the homing attack in kind of a unique way where you have to go through a line of enemies, which wasn't really in the Sonic campaign. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was kind of unusual. Yeah, and I, I'm also wondering like, are they going to have any like representation of Sonic 06? Because Shadow has only had a handful of major roles and that is one Man, of them. It, they, yeah. they showcased it in Generations. Yeah. This is the same game, so why right. not? You could just throw him in there and be like, whoa, Shadow's coming from the other side of Crisis City. And maybe Shadow could say, I don't remember this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a part of me that kind of hopes Shadow just has amnesia again for some reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, also, I was going to say, do you think, you know how Frontiers was full of old levels? Do, do you think they'll take any of the new Frontier cyberspace levels, and those will just be what Shadow runs through in Sonic. Mm. <laughs> I Sonic really runs through a Shadow level in Frontiers. I really do think it's going to be like the cyberspace levels, like maybe not terrible control wise exactly, but I think the flavor of the level design. They clearly have a group of people that they have trained specifically to build those stages now, and like I assume that this will be their chance to make some more of that. So why not? Surely Shadow, Shadow would have the same physics as... Uh, wh- 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 why are we speculating so much? We just got to wait for it to come out, right? <laughs> I love to speculate. It's fun. <laughs> uh, it'll be at E3... Th- wait, it doesn't exist. Uh, no. It'll be at Summer no. Game Fest, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Tokyo Toy Show. Do they still do that? I think Maz should. Right? Sonic Direct. It'll so- show up in a Nintendo right. Direct. It'll show up in a... Hey... Do you think that Sonic Dream Team will show up in the Nintendo Direct? Will it come to consoles? No, Aww. I don't think so. I think Apple, I, like I, when I beat that game, those credits say Apple produced that game. I think they paid for the whole thing. Yeah. Did you read the uh, the interview with? Oh God, what, what's that interview that came out recently of the guy who directed the game? Yeah, the game. that was kind of interesting. I didn't realize he the story was done his idea yeah it was that kind of fascinating yeah it was interesting to see that uh yeah the story but it, he also talks about the whole apple thing where he's like yeah they're great to work with etc cetera, etc cetera. and like the tone of the interview really makes it feel like this game is not coming to other devices anytime soon maybe later but not anytime soon yeah maybe like in three years maybe dream team plus now with one new dream <laughs> uh <laughs> well they're presumably going to keep putting stuff out for it Right. Like, he, I think he talks about that in the interview, too, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, why else would you keep uh, paying for Dream Team? Yeah. Because you don't want to pay for anything else on the Apple uh, <laughs> service. Do that you? was certainly what I discovered when I finished uh, <laughs> yeah. playing Dream Team. But... You're not into Sonic Dash Plus? I've played like... enough of that game to last me the rest of my life. <laughs> 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 and I'll let you decide how long that was, because it could be many hours or, or it could be five be. minutes. Yeah. Right. Did you unlock everyone? You're like, I did every event. I, I have Pac Man. I, I have Hello Kitty. <laughs> I don't think most of those characters were even in the game when I was playing it. I think that the whole ecosystem of like the monetization is completely different in it now. <laughs> oh god. Right. They have little like fake gardens where you're like, oh look, you can see the flickies and the pickies and the pockies hanging out. You spend <laughs> those red rings to see what they're doing. And you're like, yeah, that didn't used to be there. They always try to pull you in, yeah, and then you forget to do it for another two years until yeah. <laughs> someone reminds you. And you're like, "Oh God, there's like 17 new things in here. I don't understand." It's just, uh, oh, wait, what was the what was the name of that fur of the first game like that? Three lanes, do a jump. Like it doesn't even oh, exist. Oh, it's Temple anymore. Run, right? Oh, right, it's, Temple Run does yeah. still exist. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they invented it, but that was like the one I remember. That was the like, first big one. Popularizing yeah. it, yeah, yeah. Are we talking about Dream Team now? <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah, well, I, I wanted to go back to what you said about uh, uh, Don Rosati, the guy, the director, uh, the creative director of Dream Team, mm-hmm. uh, coming up with those story beats. Like, um, I've seen so many people, like, quote, Ian this, Ian that, Ian Flynn. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really him who came up with these different ideas and had Ian sort of glue it together. Um, did you have uh, thoughts about how this new lore worked? Or are you only interested in the gameplay? I mean, like, I didn't really, it was very, like, I guess, like, inoffensive. Like, it just sort of, you know, (laughs) I I didn't think a lot of it. I I appreciated the kind of way that the story did sort of seem to inform the theming of the levels. Like, the idea that the levels were kind of meant to represent, like, different aspects of the psyche of Cream and Eggman, you know, and in some cases both smooshing together. And, like, that was a good justification to have, like, four level themes that I thought were fun. 
I didn't have like a strong feeling about the like the dialogue cutscenes. They kind of felt like you know, like the, a decision was made that they should be there, and then everybody did their best to have the portrait say something interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I mean, I liked it, and I liked the ending. I thought it actually had a pretty good kind of quasi cinematic ending in the last level. I really like that game. Uh, it was the buried lead. <laughs> The buried lead. Yeah, it's my favorite uh, Sonic game of the year. Me too. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, I was very surprised by that. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's just it's like a very tight little package. It's got some concessions to, you know, make the controls I think simple and accessible. So it's a little more automated, but like uh, it was fun to play a Sonic game that was just platforming with some exploration and having levels that are built around like Knuckles and Tails abilities and. Sam, I think you and I might be the only people who completed the game in this call. Oh, yeah. Uh, I completed the game and I did the like the ranked mode for a couple of weeks uh, while I saw yeah, the subscription. Too. I was briefly yeah, number one once. <laughs> oh, well, maybe we were. Uh, like, I honestly think like that mode really almost kind of showcases the game at its best. I wish that there were like letter ranks for the regular stages the way there are in other Sonic games, because when you're trying to compete with other people's times like that as a motivation, it's quite fun to approach the levels from that angle yeah it almost made me subscribe to apple arcade permanently because i was like Whoa. oh i, I, I want to keep this going but i was like ah. <laughs> could have gotten those final stats. david did you not uh, complete it i thought you streamed it or something no, i didn't stream it no i no. i i got towards the end and then stopped and uh, <laughs> just you're so close both of you just do it i know i am yeah right i got to ego city because i think you you need to get back on the the time attack thing get your name up there put sonic weekly in the thing and people will just be looking oh, at you number you one sonic weekly. sonic weekly what is that right. we should like yeah just get our name shoved into yeah. as many things as possible <laughs> yeah well we want to get the name sonic weekly just into random places sam i know you make things yeah i do you, you uh you might you make a, a, a an internet comic occasionally yeah like three times a week yeah. for some reason right so what you should do is you know oh three times a week so it could be like a three-parter stretched out so you see son ick we <laughs> like, just somehow, you know sorry i only do like like really creatively defensible things like four weeks of comics about mickey mouse um. oh <laughs> i've been enjoying those hey it's uh, public domain now <laughs> yeah that's right you're reclaiming him from the, um the corporate the what? behemoth and is that true not? also in canada are you guys subject to the same <laughs> i think it, i think that yeah i think we basically have the same it's like internationally harmonized yeah right folks sam and fuzzy on instagram sam and fuzzy.com mm -hmm. get to know the man's work all right it's so stupid like we're all like oh now i can use mickey mouse in my comic and like disney won't come after me it's like they wouldn't have come after you before either they don't give a crap what you're doing <laughs> they've never heard of you it's like I, as long as they're not trying I've... to sell it <laughs> okay, so I, I've heard stories about like there will be a roller rink or I don't know a teen hangout spot, and they've got like Mickey Mouse painted on the wall. Oh and yeah, some Disney rep will come and make them change it. Yeah, that is that true. That is true. They will do that. Or like there was a famous one where they like made a daycare like paint over their mural and stuff like that because that's necessary for them to defend their trademark. C copyright is one thing, but like trademark has to do with uh, how I you're see. using iconography in relation to your brand and brand confusion. And so if they're not actively defending themselves against misuses of their trademarks that cause brand confusion, then they could lose their trademark. So they're very weirdly litigious at seemingly random times about that kind of stuff. But like, if you just like, I mean, you know, there's tons of people doing fan art of Disney characters online and nobody cares. There's, uh, it just is, uh, you know, it's contextual. So like I did a bunch of comics with Mickey Mouse and them, because I could, but like I, I could have before. They were not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not going to put it on the the wall at the at the skating yeah. rink. You know, I, I have an association in my head that skating rinks are really dangerous place because in my hometown, somebody got stabbed at the skating rink. And Whoa! <laughs> okay. It was like at a really formative time for me. It's like, well, I'm not going there. I don't want to get stabbed. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> right. When I was growing up, I think the skating rink was just where people went to fool around like in the back dark room part i don't know i never went oh that's what we do at the bowling alley oh, oh. is that what knuckles is yeah, doing well, in the... down. <laughs> whoa is I wade see, i see wade well wait his last name is wells right no whipple whipple, it's whipple. Wade, whipple. wade wells is Come the guy on. from slider yeah <laughs> <laughs>
I am disappointed. Hey, you know, Sliders was criminally underrated. Yeah. Like two and a half good seasons. (laughs) And then we don't talk about what happened after that part. Right. Uh, Hey, it was Sci-Fi's flagship show for like half a year. The Sci-Fi Oh, God. Some of the stuff they Sliders and Quantum Leap confused. Is that normal or am i just like way off base i mean they do have similar premises yeah yeah uh, one's about time travel rather than dimensions but it's still the kind of like especially the early sliders was always like an more like an alternate history thing where it's like oh there was like this one specific thing happened to change the timeline you know in this dimension and now everybody is communist or a dinosaur or whatever <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's a dinosaur. <laughs> or a communist dinosaur. Well, there were two dinosaur episodes. There was the the one in season two, um, where they were like, Whoa, there's dinosaurs, where's the humans? And they realized they're just in a like a state park where, oh, dinosaurs survived and humans evolved and it's cool. And then the other one was when they introduced uh the new lady, Matt M- Oh what Carrie were her. Uh it yeah. was like Matt was it Maggie or something? I think I, it's her name like is escaping. Yeah, where she was like People slid to a world where dinosaurs just happened to be there. It doesn't matter. We don't have to get into detail. I just remember dinosaurs twice. <laughs> and there was the communist episode, which was the pilot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a good one. <laughs> they never did a Nazi one, though. Apparently, they pitched it and the, and the, and the network went, oh, you did, you did one about communists and we didn't want you to do that one. You're definitely not doing Nazis. Do another dinosaur one. It, it, it did well. That, you're right those oh, dinosaur right. episodes always suspiciously seem to tie in with the release of something related to a jurassic park film or i mean or i Rome think that, yeah <laughs> there was definitely a pivot in season three where fox was pushing for like have an episode that that's thematically similar to a blockbuster mm-hmm. film yeah dinosaurs the tv show i'm the baby gotta love me <laughs> right i feel like those are some left-leaning politics in that show maybe <laughs> he's he's unhappy with his boss I don't know if I don't know if he organizes, you know, I don't know if uh, um, he understands the plight of the of labor. They do a whole episode about the invention of the concept of sexual harassment. Oh, when I was in school, we were forced to watch the very special episode of Dinosaurs about drug abuse. Drug yeah, abuse and drug. <laughs> really? And I was I was just like, why are we watching this? Like the show had already been canceled for like three years, at least at that point. I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, man, I was a big dinosaurs fan. There's a lot of very special episodes of dinosaurs. They got kind of preachy as they went on. Wow. Well, it was very, it, lots of lots of satire. There's like their anti-war episode and there's their, you know, the sexual harassment episode with sexual Harris and the, 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 the drugs. They were like spinies or something. There's one about extinct animals that people keep eating. Mm-hmm. Wow. I was thinking about how they could bring back dinosaurs because we all know how it ended. They all died. Right. But yeah, they, it was because of the ice age. So if you wanted to bring back dinosaurs season four continuation, you have a group of archeologists find them frozen in their house and they thaw them out and they're all fine. Mm. And then you go right back to like, the baby didn't die. Yeah. Because right now, canonically that baby died. Yeah. He died. That's what I would do. I'd have them thaw out with ice. And then, uh, <laughs> it like we're back, a dinosaur story, but yeah. different because dinosaur is not we're back dinosaurs. <laughs> I feel like the time for that was like Netflix 2014. And if oh. it didn't happen, then it's not going to happen. Uh, it's so strange that how did that show not last longer? Why, Sam, I guess you, you would you would know. Dinosaurs? Yeah. It was on for four seasons. That's pretty good. OK. Yeah, I guess that's pretty good. But I mean, this was the height of dinosaur mania, too. It seems like uh, for was they told every tale they wanted to tell or did it, it get moved around and then canceled or how? Did I they... think it was just really expensive. I think it was a really slow and expensive show to make. And they just the math didn't work on it anymore is my kind of memory of what people have said. It's also kind of like weirdly like the Flintstones in that like the early seasons feel more like an adult sitcom. And then as it goes on, it feels like it kind of starts to play like younger and younger. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe they were just trying to fit in with their like programming block uh, on ABC. But yeah, I think it was just a tremendously expensive show to make. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny, like probably let's say it was like at its nadir of ratings. It's like, oh, man, this is only pulling in six million people per night. Like today right. to yeah. have a show like that. Would be... <laughs> yeah, we'd be on year 20. Mm-hmm. Dinosaur. Yeah. yeah, we'd see them evolve in real time. It'd be great. <laughs> uh 
Well, it lasted longer than Aliens and the Family, so you got to give mm-hmm. that. And it's four, like, I think it's like four full seasons, unless the first one was short, but like like 20 episode seasons. There's a lot of episodes of Dinosaurs, I, I think. It does strike me like there's hundreds of sitcoms that lasted part of a season or one season and got canceled that were seen by tens of millions of people that no one remembers. <laughs> yeah. It's weird to think about. Yeah. Thank God we have this podcast to talk about them. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. On a weekly podcast. We, do. we should. Um, right. I was going yeah. to bring up the Drew Carey show and then I remembered that we talked about it. We did get the have. Drew Carey show. Yeah. We're going to get him on the show. Did, yeah, we got to get Drew. I mean, he might do it. Did you talk about the incredible final season of the Drew Carey show? Uh, oh, man, it's so bad, right? We did <laughs> kind of like a reboot to make it like more buzzy and like about pop cultural references, right? Yeah, and and like at the end, it got picked up for multiple seasons, like, and they were kind of forced to make them, even though they would have maybe otherwise canceled it based on the ratings. So like, I guess <laughs> nobody was paying attention in the final season, but they start doing stuff like he'll just walk off the set from his office directly into the set of his house and they won't like, like it's, <laughs> it's weird. I also, like that. Uh, that yeah. Sounds funny. Uh, I feel like there was also later episodes where Drew Carey himself is not really in it. It's all just like, uh, supported gas is like, yeah, it's Lewis and show. the other guy. Yeah. Mm. Ryan styles. And, uh, it jumped the shark when they got rid of the Saturn, I think is, what we can agree yeah, on. Yeah, that's what we established. <laughs> Sam, what else have you been playing? Uh, we were talking about the 16-bit Triple Trouble game. I think you oh, yeah. played that recently. I don't know. You might be the only one among us, though. Who I, I, I played true. through it uh, yeah. when it came out or when it was finished. Like, I played the demo years ago when mm-hmm. they did the demo, and then again when it finally came out. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. It's real good. I've, I've played it, I think, three times. I played... Um, the Sonic and Knuckles campaigns when it came out, and then I recently replayed the Sonic campaign. Uh, I guess maybe like a month or two ago. On my, I, I got one of those like Android retro handheld type things, and it ran on there. So this is a really good 2D Sonic game. I uh, they did a very good job. Hmm. It's one of my favorites, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. I thought like it was like very thoughtfully put together. There's only like one bit that I thought like feels fan gamey to me, and I think it's like this vertical stage with metal sonic in it oh yeah i mean i like that part a lot but it does feel it's because it just it doesn't feel like a thing they would have done yeah but i mean and then there's that snowboarding level that's like the thing for mickey mania which is also kind of like that. the thing that i really think that the original triple trouble got right was there were parts of it where as a kid i would play and just like drag it out because it was cool Mm -hmm. like i'm gonna just hang out on this snowboard for a while because Hey, I'm Sonic on a snowboard. Like, I don't want to progress through this level. I just want to want to look cool and do tricks. Well, you mm-hmm. you both have mentioned like um, this this part was thoughtfully done. Can you can you explain um, that part? Sorry, which, which part was thoughtfully done, or just the whole thing? Well, just like I think the whole game. Well, the, but, the yeah. parts that you thought were thoughtfully done. Oh, can you? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because like obviously the the basic ideas for the level themes and mechanics and stuff are taken from the original game, but like it doesn't feel like that game it feels like sonic 3 and knuckles and it's level style so it's interesting watching them kind of like adapt those levels into that format and i just feel like they did a very good job of doing that like i mean i don't know it's one of those things that's maybe kind of hard to put your finger on it but like the kind of flavor of the level design like reminds me specifically of sonic 3 and knuckles in a way that even like sonic mania doesn't quite do i not in a negative way but just i think mania kind of takes a little more from stuff like cd and two um yeah. right and two yeah. yeah so it really it has it just has that that vibe like a similar kind of pace and flow and like similar size of levels and then they'll take things that were just kind of like briefly used or explored in the original game like the train level and then they'll like turn it into like a whole like stage in a way that feels like very authentic to the genesis games mm. Yeah, I I agree with that. Like Mania is doing kind of mashups too. Like we're gonna mm-hmm. do Flying Battery, but it's Wing Fortress. And whereas Triple Triple Sixteen, I think is doing doing something a little bit differently. One thing I really liked, and maybe this is a little fan gamey too, is like it continues directly from the end of Sonic and Knuckles. <laughs> yes, that, is, that part is very fan gamey. <laughs> very fan gamey. I really liked it. So like, it's okay, great. So you've got Super Sonic, and how does he lose the emeralds? Uh, well, this this will answer it for you. Like chasing after dr eggman and uh makes another attack and he's super and then there's there's the master of world involved and yeah and there you go and it feels like authentic because like 
you know, they were already starting to do that with the Genesis games, like Sonic 3 picks up where Sonic 2 ends. And right. it's kind of like, a you know, you could imagine as a like logical extraction or extrapolation that they would kind of, you know, maybe continue to do that. Yeah, right. You see Sonic lose the Emeralds in Sonic 3, so that makes sense. And then I guess the one other thing I would just extra champion about this game is that the Knuckles campaign feels like a real Knuckles campaign, like it's as substantial as the one in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Like he has his own roots. He occasionally gets like a completely own spin on a stage. It it, it has that like that amount of like diversion and substance to it that um, I don't actually think any other 2D Sonic game has. Like Mania has some Knuckles exclusive content, but I feel like not quite on that level and then like the advanced games you know barely really explore that kind of thing right and, and i think this 16-bit uh triple trouble transcends good for a fan game transcends good for a mobile game and it's just like a good good game i would put it up with mania in terms of like the most successful but it only has six chaos emeralds. Where's the seventh one? <laughs> How come none of the Game Gear games oh, yeah. have seven? Are, are there seven? It does have seven, seven emeralds in it, though, doesn't it? It's just Eggman's got one of them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not in the Game Gear game, but in this version. Okay, in the, in the new version. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, because if it is picking up right off three knuckles, I, I played some of it. I didn't finish it. I stopped because I was like, oh, I'm going to play this in front of people. I'm going to stream it somewhere. And mm. I never did. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, but you should finish Dream Team. Uh, i was like wow this this is really fun it's, it's really it it felt like a sonic game which i think is an accomplishment in and of itself yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and i do want to go back and finish it and perhaps in a world where we know triple trouble happened because of superstars maybe this is the one that we can pretend happened i mean if, if the story uh-oh, uh-oh. you gotta pay, you gotta pay attention well, to the chels tube uh, that came out recently pay that uh, canonizes oh. Triple Trouble. So, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, it's I guess it's just it's a game that like really <laughs> like it just it's really accurate, you know, like like that's the, that's and I'm not always necessarily a champion of that in fan games. Like I kind of like it also when people just, you know, they want to put their own spin on it. And it has like a personal flavor. I think that's fun. It's like it, it's not your job, like make the game that you think would be cool. I don't mind when Sonic games kind of fan games like go astray or whatever, but to play one that just kind of felt like, yeah, you could just basically have put this out in 1994 and everybody would have been like, yeah, that's one of those, you know, like, I just think that's very impressive. Right. It could have been the Genesis 95 game before 3d blast after knuckles. You're not buying a 32 (laughs) X. You're not, you're ever playing chaotix. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Although I'm sure if it came out in 95, people may would would have been like, well, I don't know. This is kind of similar to the one that came out previously. Like, well, true. People were already saying that about Sonic and knuckles. So yeah. (laughs) Give it the, the, Astal, how do you say Astal? A S T A L, the Saturn game with the oh, beautiful yeah. hand graphics. Give it that treatment, like same gameplay, but you know, make it make it look like that. Mm. Put it on Saturn. What else look like that? Rayman. Right, still, no one would have bought it because oh, it's two D <laughs> and hand drawn. I want the polygons. Right. Uh, I wanna. I wanna play like a, like a Tomb Raider. Where's the Where's the Sega Visions Astal reboot? That's true. <laughs> I've never played that game. I think I even own it, and I've never played it. I, you I, own it. It looks wow. really I think good. So I don't know if it necessarily plays that great, but we're we're doing things with it that uh, you, you wouldn't believe. Um, I I uh, I got a Sega Saturn. I think in like maybe like 2010 or something like that. I had never played Knights before. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe it was a little earlier than that because there's no other way to play Knights nice whatever this was the, easily at least. Uh, so I went on my website and I was like, "Hey, would anybody like trade a Sega Saturn with me for like a cool drawing?" Because like at the time they were not <laughs> worth very much money, um, and they did. And so I got a Saturn, and and I think that Astal is one of the like four games that I own for it. I think I have that. And, wow. Uh, but maybe I better double check that. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> Astal. For the listeners who don't know, he's some sort of uh, godlike figure who is very angry that his princess-style godlike figure has been kidnapped by some other godlike figure, and he goes and he's going to get revenge, and he has a, a pet bird. 
he made a lot of cameos in Archie Sonic. Yeah. In the in group shots of right. battles. Spaziante. Love yeah. that. Search the Astol Sega Saturn uh box art and you will see that he looks like Might of the Ray and his bird looks like Flicky. And then we have the end from Sonic Frontiers <laughs> in the background as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a Sonic oh, game, wow. isn't it? It could be. It could be part of the overall Sonic. I think this is canon. I'm I'm pro shared Sega universe for, for the most part. <laughs> it's got kind of like a cool anime style intro and oh. much less cool not anime style cutscenes in the game. <laughs> I remember when I went to play it, it was like, oh, this is one of those games where like the sprites are all really big. And at first that seems cool. And then you try to play it and you're like, you can see more. <laughs> you know? Game Gear game. <laughs> oh, just like Triple. <laughs> yeah. Just like oh, Sonic, or Blast. Sonic Blast. Yeah. Yeah, Blast especially. <laughs> That's the one. I, I think it does look really good in motion, but mm-hmm. it's it's really not that fun to play. Time to bring it back. I do wish the Sonic game looked like that, though. Like, yeah. That sort of hand-drawn 2D thing is fantastic. Gotta play Dream Team. Gotta play Triple Trouble. Uh-huh. Gotta get Sonic Shadow, the deluxe fun edition, pre-order. 80 bucks. <laughs> 80 bucks. <laughs> Gotta contribute to Rolling Rascal. <laughs> Gotta sign up for Paramount. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You gotta buy... Ken's, uh, you know, buy the Ken's comics. Fork it over. Yeah. Triple Trouble 16 bit 3, though. You can you can play that one gratis. Thank, thankfully, Triple Trouble. But right. I should probably I, like donate could, to the creator, right? Yeah, donate to Noah Koblen, send him 60 bucks. Hmm. And, <laughs> right, because he's, well, they're also making uh, that the Sonic Drift 16 bit now, right? Yeah. That's, that's their current oh, really? project, which I haven't played yet either I, but they put out a demo i don't know if, i don't think it's the whole thing right grant just the demo we gotta get you we gotta get you a patreon so you can subscribe to all these new things that's right <laughs> yeah how else will you that's afford right. it <laughs> and they could subscribe to my patreon whoa sam tell us about your patreon and thank you for being on this very special episode of dinosaurs with us <laughs> oh yeah yeah i love to talk about jim henson's dinosaurs mm-hmm. um yeah i mean i i've been doing a web comic for a million years so like all web comic people i have a patreon uh i also have an online store and uh ebooks and all that good stuff none of it has anything to do with sonic or dinosaurs well hey you know if you're alive like 70 years from now, once Sonic the Hedgehog goes into the public domain, you'll be able to put Sonic and all of his friends in your comic. You'll be like, yep, Sam, Sonic, and Fuzzy. High fives all around. We'll have a good old time. Because we'll all be old. We'll all be brains floating in our cybernetic bodies. Of course, if we're all still alive then, maybe copyright would have finally been extended. And guess what? That's right. Mickey Mouse is not in the public domain anymore. But you know... What will live in the public domain in your heart? That's right. It's Sonic Weekly. Sonic Weekly. Weekly. <laughs> because we do this publicly, and we are masters of <laughs> domains. It's fine. If you want to license this show, we're very reasonable. That's right. Our rates are low, and our standards are lower. Not too low. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, if you've enjoyed this, why wouldn't you have? Uh, be sure, uh, if you haven't already, to subscribe to the show. You can do that on your podcatcher of choice, Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Use Podcast Attic for that open feeling, that open good time of source. Or hey, we have the YouTube channel, which is at Sonic dash weekly don't forget the dash or the don't forget the at yeah. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we we can't promise where you're gonna go we put those up episodes up with exciting gameplay footage uh who is it that, that does the gameplay i don't Our know friend what, jack uh, of old games used. jack jack of, of old okay games. that's what we're going with jack of old games. and you know the links to sam's comics and and store and patreon wh- why they'll be in the description they are in the description right now wow that's convenient. Exciting links. Exciting. You can you can check out Sam in all the places he mentioned earlier, all the places where he uses the public domain. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of us, it says always Sonic Weekly Podcast at gmail.com. Send us a line. And uh, that's also how you get into our Discord. Ask for the link. Come in. Talk to like-minded Sonic fans of all ages. Well, I don't think we have any like elderly people in there you could be the first whoa if you're <laughs> if you're in your 80s and you want to talk sonic please come in i'd love to talk to you uh thank you smoothies for the edit always rescuing our nonsense thank you sam for being here once again we'll thank you many times <laughs> thank you both for your rings 
thank you, Grant, for, for having all of this happen in the first place. Thank you, the viewer. I already probably said that. Thank yourself, David. Thank you, David. Thank yourself I, for the first time. I'd like for once in your life, David. Mm -hmm. For once in your stupid fucking life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even be fake mad at you. I'm so sorry. But thank yourself, man. I'm, I'll thank myself for thanking all of you. <laughs> what? I don't. God damn it! God damn it! What a cop out. <laughs>